what are the nutritional requirements for a human? Human nutritional requirements allow our body to maintain homeostasis. In fact, the main function of every organ system in our body, other than our reproductive system, is to help our body maintain homeostasis. So a balanced diet provides both fuel energy for cellular work in the form of calories, which we'll talk about, but also building materials. To construct needed components. Cells break down food molecules in cellular respiration, and this process releases energy. Often sugar molecules are broken down in this way, but other types of organic molecules can also be broken down. Calories are a measure of the energy stored in your food. Calories can also be used as a measure of energy you expend in daily activities. The metabolic rate of an organism is the rate of energy consumption per day. So a calorie is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a gram of water by one degree centigrade. And this is calorie with a lowercase c. A kilocalorie is 1,000 calories with a little c. Yet kilocalories, these are the units listed on food labels, or sometimes they're also listed as calorie with a capital C. So calorie with a capital C is one kilocalorie. And so in this chart, I don't expect you to memorize the details of this chart or anything like that, but I would just like you to see that by eating certain food items, such as a cheeseburger, pepperoni pizza, or soft drink, they're going to provide you a certain amount of kcals, or calories with a capital C. Performing different activities, such as jogging, swimming, or walking, they are going to expend a certain amount of calories by performing that activity for a certain length of time. And so we can actually see there's a relationship between a length of time you can perform a given activity based on an item that was consumed. For example, a quarter pound cheeseburger, if it gives you 417 kcals worth of energy, well, that's enough energy to actually go jogging for about 30 minutes or so, or go swimming for an hour, or to walk for an hour and 45 minutes. This relationship between consuming energy and spending energy is an important concept. Next, we're going to talk about food as a building material. The cells of your body assemble polymers from the monomers found in your food. Your cells are built from these polymers. Essential nutrients are substances needed by the body that it cannot build itself. It's important to eat a balanced diet with all of your essential nutrients because those are essential building blocks. It turns out that there are essential amino acids. And in fact, for humans, for adult humans, there are typically eight essential amino acids. And it turns out that different foods contain different options for these. Now, if we're talking about plant sources of proteins, grains contain six of the eight essential amino acids. Legumes contain six of the eight essential amino acids. But if you have them together, you're able to 
consume all of those essential amino acids, even if you aren't consuming animal proteins. So it's possible to have beans and rice together, and that covers a lot of your essential amino acids. If you have combinations, if it's soybeans and corn, if it's rice and peanuts, a variety of different combinations can give you your essential amino acids, even if you aren't eating animal proteins. Another category of essential nutrients are our vitamins and minerals. Now, while these are often listed together, they are in fact distinct from each other. So vitamins, vitamins are organic molecules required in the diet for good health, and they function mostly as assistants to enzymes. Whereas minerals are inorganic substances required in the diet. These will be things like elemental nutrients, like iron and calcium and magnesium. There are also essential fatty acids. Our cells make fats and other lipids. By combining fatty acids with other molecules, essential fatty acids are those which we cannot make from simpler molecules. You may have heard of these talked about as omega-3 fatty acids or even omega-6 fatty acids. Those are things which we need to obtain from our diet that we cannot make on our own. Now, here in the United States, there is a division of the federal government known as the Food and Drug Administration. And the FDA, they require that all prepared packaged food items and even now all restaurant food items have nutritional facts available such as the list of ingredients and key nutritional facts. The FDA has established these recommended daily allowances which are the minimal nutrition standards established by nutritionists for preventing nutrient deficiencies. And so these food labels will tell you information such as how many calories per serving, what the serving size is, what the ingredients are, and some of the major information about these macromolecules and vitamins and minerals, whether you're talking about total fats or proteins or carbs, also information about sodium and potassium and a variety of other minerals and nutrients. Now we're going to end this lecture video talking about nutritional disorders. Nutritional disorders can cause severe problems. One example of a nutritional disorder is malnutrition. Malnutrition is a dietary deficiency of one or more of the essential nutrients. Scurvy is an example of this as a, being a lack of vitamin C. Now in malnutrition, a person may be getting all the calories they need. They just aren't eating the right types of food. If you're only eating junk food all the time, you may not be getting all your vitamins and minerals. And so that could be considered malnutrition. Undernutrition Undernutrition is caused by an inadequate intake of calories. If someone is on a severely restrictive diet, whether because they are trying this new fad diet or maybe they just don't have access to food, if you aren't providing your body with the calories it needs to power itself, this can cause severe problems. Now, some people might do it short term in attempts to lose some weight, but as a long term strategy, it can be very damaging to your digestive system and your overall health. Now, obesity is also considered to be a nutritional disorder. Obesity is an inappropriately high ratio of weight to height. Now, to some extent, a tendency towards obesity can be inherited. but it is consuming more calories than are used, 
consistently. Now, in this particular picture with these two lab mice, they are of the same species. These mice are the same general age, but the mouse with the orange spot on its cheek, it has a particular mutation in the receptor for the hormone ghrelin. Ghrelin is a hormone that triggers hunger in mammals. And for this particular mouse, these feelings of hunger are constantly active, even if it has recently been fed. And so for these mice, if they're provided access to food, they will continue consuming food, storing those excess calories as body fat. Not all cases of human obesity are linked necessarily to this hormone ghrelin, but it is the action of consuming even when an individual has enough calories consumed that will lead to obesity. In our next module, we'll be learning about inheritance and genetics.